Auckland Grammar School has grown and it has become a meritocracy. In 2019, it is a meritocracy. Our modern times are in stark contrast with the Auckland of 1869 when our school was opened. The style of education we offer 150 years later has progressed through its people. It stands today proudly as a state secondary boys' school in New Zealand, focusing young men on the acquisition of disciplinary knowledge across core academic subjects and building in them resilience and values that will allow them to be contributors in New Zealand society. In 2014, the late Sir John Buchanan told a full assembly hall that patience, persistence, determination, ongoing learning and curiosity were and are the watchwords. The more you put in, the more you get out, and the wider options are created through time. Always seek the best environment, he said, the best company and the best people, beneficial experience of grammar. Leave understanding these few words, competition, excellence, confidence, humility, not one factor unique to grammar, but the way they come together here is distinctive, a great start for life's exciting journey. These are words synonymous with who we are, words that have stood the test of time. Like headmasters before me, I too am a believer that through time our people, experienced masters, old boys, students, parents, have influenced the direction and the standards of the school. That said, they have also been influenced by its environment, and I'd like to recognise this today. We are privileged to be able to see, smell and feel its past by what has been left for us, including the majestic main block that we're in today, designed through competition like the Auckland Town Hall some years earlier. The winning Arnold Abbott design was described as both imaginative and imposing. Auckland Grammar School today is recognisable as that iconic Spanish mission-style architecture that sits comfortably on the side of Mount Eden. The honours boards were donated by the Old Boys Association at the request of Tibbs in 1915. And I know the names on the honours boards above the stage have become committed to memory by thousands of grammar boys, including many of you sitting here today. The War Memorial, donated by the Old Boys Association in 1919 and unveiled in 1922. Governor General Lord Jellicoe told those gathered at the unveiling that the monument commemorated the deeds of courage, self-sacrifice and devotion to duty, which apart from educational purposes, was the aim of the school. We will remember them. These are not only tangible symbols of Auckland Grammar School, they are a daily reminder to our current staff and students of the responsibilities bestowed upon them as the current guardians of the school. They influence the tone and the culture of our school. They help our young men understand the meaning and place of sacrifice and self-discipline. Recognisable to us all, they each represent something to a grammar man. These are more than buildings, more than symbols. They have influenced us all in some way and will do for future generations of grammar boys and will on generations and generations to come. I've been mesmerised, it's fair to say, by the school's history as we've been preparing for these celebrations and its secrets continue to be revealed. While not necessarily a moment, I was particularly taken by what SDE Weir, the editor of the 1919 Term 2 Chronicle wrote. In the school's 50th year, he chose to predict just where Auckland Grammar School would be in 50 years time. And he wrote, The school is celebrating its centenary and we old boys are to come together once more. During the 50 years, the school has increased so greatly that several branches have been formed in different quarters of the city, but the old school of Mount Eden still remains. In that time, great changes have taken place in the surroundings. Pieces of land that we remember as having been rock-strewn wastes are now well-laid-out tennis lawns and playing fields. Certain unsightly landmarks, recalled with a smile, have disappeared and altogether the environments more befit a school. We march into the hall, rung in by the same bell that we heard with sinking hearts when we were young. 
The old place is much the same, save that the honours board is filled and the number of trophies has multiplied considerably. We sadly miss some old familiar faces. Some have been taken from us naturally, but many have been lost in those wars which even the great European war could not prevent. They have been given their lives gladly, remembering the glorious example of the old boys 50 years ago. As we look on the keen young faces before us, we feel we may have no fears for the future. They are filled with the same enthusiasm which we ourselves felt when we realized what our predecessors had done, and with the same determination to make the coming 50 years more wonderful even than the last. And so, we may go on as long as the school lasts. From year to year, it steadily advances in sport and scholarship and healthy traditions. From the time when it was in the Howe Street immigration barracks until schools are no more, there must be no going back. And finally, to the moments Auckland Grammar School was opened in May 17, 1869 by Alfred, Duke of Edinburgh. Governor Bowen had succeeded Governor Gray the year before and earnestly advised some 80 pupils to cultivate twin habits of industry and perseverance in the pursuit of science and literature. Grammar remains at school. We're focused on cementing the academic and character foundations that a young man requires for his next steps into tertiary education, vocational pathways, career and life. Today, 150 years on, the links of celebrating our past and embracing our future are bound as one. Uh, as we opened the 150th celebrations, I described grammar as a meritocracy. And amongst friends tonight, perhaps the vernacular can be more direct. We like winning. And we like growing young men with a will to win. We particularly like winning when it's against the odds, because we're prepared, we have belief, courage and pride, and we're prepared to work hard to achieve it through difficulties to greatness. Winning, achieving, succeeding, whatever synonym you wish to use, in order to do so, you need courage. You need the courage to accept the challenge of being measured, and being prepared to lose through making mistakes. And it's everything that comes with the trials and tribulations of that process that is still grammar. And we need grammar to be that bastion of hope and an exemplar to all about what can be achieved when we expect the very best from young men. From that, they learn about positive influence that comes from being members of a group who have exercised self-control exhibited character and care for others, learnt to cope in trying circumstances, and then achieved with integrity when their time comes. That will be the outcome of a modern meritocracy, winning the Grammar Way.